Now, the, here we have an example of breaking news. They've just reported the, the, the deaths of four children in a, in a fire in the UK, and now they're reporting uh, the number of deaths in a fire in Paris. Now, this is uh, breaking news, and they're promising to keep us up to date as the day goes on. Well, who actually needs to know all the gr gr grisly details about people dying in fires? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a personal tragedy. It's not something to be broadcast all over the, all over the world. I mean, it's a tragedy, and it should be reported, sure, but not as this huge uh, breaking news nonsense. How much has changed in how we make the news and what the future may hold for the news industry? So, we're asking what next for news, our talking point this morning. I'm joined in the studio by television executive and former BBC chairman, Lord Michael Grade, and uh, former president of the Wall Street Journal and Dow Jones, Katie Vanek-Smith. Uh, Lord Grade, Katie, nice to see you both this morning. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> 30, if only I were that young. <laughs> um, but let's talk about the future of news, because just looking back at some of our footage this morning from when Sky News first started, We've come a long way in those 30 years, Lord Grey. Yes, technology's moved on. Uh, when I first came into broadcasting in 1973, mm -hmm. uh, the equipment was so clumsy. Uh, the big transformation has mm -hmm. been small cameras, digital. You know, you see in the old days, we, we once did an interview in, in Downing Street. We had 52 technicians in Downing Street to do a head-to-head -head, uh, interview. Now you know, the, the cameraman works, mm -hmm. does the interview, uh, w works the sound, the lighting, everything. So that has transformed the nimbleness of news uh, and the immediacy of news. Now, what do you think the challenges are now, Katie, in terms of news? I mean, you know, in those 30 years, as, as Michael said, the technology has evolved, but we're now looking at social media, uh, websites, more news channels than ever before, streaming services. So I think the immediacy of news is, is, is a true fact, but actually I think that's led to a sort of an acceleration of news. And I think one of the things that we're finding is that customers and consumers really are sort of overwhelmed slightly by news. So the cycle of news is so fast, the technology enables such a huge amount of news on so many different delivery channels that I think you'll see... Um, uh, a selection of uh, slower news organisations emerging as well. So I think there is demand for breaking news, but I also think there's demand for what's driving the news, what's behind the news, news when it's ready. So the technology is positive in many ways for actually delivering sort of faster breaking news, but I think it's also delivered a whole cacophony of noise and sort of in many areas, news has become noise. I think the biggest change that's going to come, and it'll come sooner than people realize and it's already happened in america we have a tradition in the uk uh, of what we call impartial news mm -hmm. so uh, you know you wouldn't call uh, the guardian or the daily mail impartial they have a point of view on the world uh, as all newspapers do mm -hmm. television has always not been allowed to express a point of view so i think partial news is coming very soon and i think there will always be a bedrock of impartial news or the BBC and other places, but I think that's coming very soon. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Because this buzz phrase, mainstream media, is everywhere now, born in the States, I mean, in, in the Donald Trump era, and the attacks on mainstream news organisations. It seems that sort of truth, credibility, uh, and retaining neutrality is more important than ever before, Lord Great. Uh, uh, there's got to be uh, a place for impartial news, uh, but but I think that the genie's out of the bottle, and I don't think we can constrain, uh, constrain it much longer because it's born of a, an analog age when spectrum was very scarce and there were only a few channels. Today, you have limitless, limitless numbers of channels. And America Fox News, for example, has, has broken the mold. And people are enjoying the sense of freedom that they're not being uh, um, managed by news editors, they can speak directly to the public. They can cut you guys out. They can get they well, can get to an audience. If you look at Twitter, obviously, uh, when news events happen, the news breaks on there. It's not verified, but people can film at the scene. They can write what they want, and that raises a big question, doesn't it, Katie? In terms of in the future, 
how do you know what news to trust? I was reading a really interesting article in The Times yesterday about so many people get their news from social media now and Facebook and the algorithms that tailor it to what you like. So people are existing in news bubbles and they're only being fed the news that they like to read. So <clears throat> there's a lot of work going on around verification of news. So the platforms themselves, who are under quite a lot of pressure after the tech clash of last year, themselves are doing a lot of work to um, create verification services, kite marks for news and, and, uh, and things like that. But I think you've seen, and you'll see more of this, a return to trusted brands. So many of the brands that have existed, the heritage brands, if you like, um, have seen um, in the US, they saw the Trump bump. So the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, the New York Times, they've all benefited from uh, this concern around fake news and the sort of so the source of the news. But equally, I think you're also seeing the rise of uh, many other media sources like ourselves at Tortoise, but also the correspondent, Kenzan, which is a startup in the UK, who are looking at more participatory models where you have journalists coming together with members of the public. So you provide that sort of platform like Twitter, but you create the journalistic with members together rather than just a voice the real on a social test, platform. I agree with all everything you say. I think the real test of news comes when there's a crisis. Mm -hmm. you know, God forbid a catastrophe or you know a war or something. That's when the journalists come into their own and social media and the rest of it becomes rubbish at that point. It's only professional journalism, professional news organizations that can cover with real authority the big events. There's a lot of rubbish around news because there's so much airtime to fill, so many pages to fill. There's an awful lot of rubbish. But when it really matters, that's when the that's when Sky News, ITN, the BBC, and the leading brands of newspapers they'll, they'll come into their own. What about paying for content? Because um, there have been a lot of. Um, online news sources uh, that have popped up. It comes back to people wanting news on demand. I'm thinking of websites like BuzzFeed, The Huffington Post, all of whom, of whom are cutting jobs, The Pool, which went into administration this week. Good quality journalism, but they're suffering from people not wanting to pay for what they read. Are they, or did they have a model that was an ad-only funded model? Mm -hmm. I think the reality is that people have always been prepared to pay for what they value. Mm -hmm. Back in 2010, when The Times was the first non-business newspaper to charge for content, everyone said it would be a disaster. Mm -hmm. They would be out of the conversation. But actually, it was the model that turned The Times profitable. Mm -hmm. So the business of news um, you know, is an important one. And the demand for people paying for news actually has stayed very consistent for the last 20 years. The thing that's changed mm -hmm. is the um, uh, sort of the publishers themselves are now embracing that as the model. So the Reuters Institute found that last year was the tipping point. Mm -hmm. So last year when they interviewed their sort of leaders of business, they found that most people were now saying that paid for journalism, if you're a news brand, is part and parcel of the model. The challenge is don't just do one model. Don't just have ads. Mm. Have ads and subscription or membership. It's quite hard to charge for something that's available free elsewhere. Yeah. <laughs> you get the BBC for a licence fee, we get ITV, yeah. ITN, free on Channel 4 and it, it's quite hard to charge people for something that they're getting for free. You do a okay. different type of news. Yes, yes. So breaking got, news is commoditized. You've yes. got to be distinctive. Oh, we, yeah. ha we have a niche right there. Lord Michael Graydon, Katie Vanek-Smith, thank you very much. Uh, Sky News celebrating 30 years. We're adapting and Grave forget to, to mention when he makes all his uh, loud statements about when disaster strikes, the mainstream media boys are there on the spot and you can trust everything they tell you. I mean, it's an absolute load of cobblers. Where he's still being told lies about uh, the last war. The, the press has never come clean about what, it, what, it's, what it's hidden. In, in, in Venezuela right now, the, the press apparently have failed to discover that the guy Guaido is actually a, a, a Washington man. He's part of, he was working for the IMF, for God's sake. He's there ready to, to flog off all of Venezuela's resources. That's his job. And where's the mainstream boys? Where is Lord Grade? Where are the rest of Sky News? Well, I'll tell you where Sky News are. They're on motorbikes driving around with Stuart Ramsey, you know, that the hard man of the fake news, shouting out his reports from, from one motorbike 
to, to a recording, sound recorder on another motorbike, and it's all lies. All of it is a load of tosh. So what, what, what people like Lord Grade and, and Sky News can't stand is, here I am now, standing here talking, and I'm exposing the crap that they're talking. They talk absolute, absolute garbage. You never get you never get any insight into what's actually happening with with, with them. They, they 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 cover things up. They refuse to report on on the the, the 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 actual facts. Like in 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 Syria, for example, they refuse to report the facts on the ground that it was perfectly ev evident that the majority of the people in Syria fully supported Bashar al-Assad. It was as plain as day. And yet they completely ignored that. They continually pushed the tale of how the people hate him. They, they did exactly the same with Saddam Hussein. They did exactly the same with Gaddafi. They did exactly the same with the Taliban in, in, in Afghanistan. They're doing exactly the same with the Houthis in, in, uh, in Yemen. All of them are demonized by people like the BBC and Sky News. They never get a fair press. I, I, I complain about everybody. Russia today isn't a lot better. It's in, in some ways it's better, but in other ways they're covering up their own rubbish. I mean, Russia today has got, a, has, has got as, as, as much uh, guilty history to, to conceal as all the rest of them. You see, they, they, the reason that everybody is worried, the reason why the Jews now are putting in all these laws, if you dare to say boo to a Jew, you can go to jail. You, you can't you know, have sanctions against Israel for the crimes they're committing in Palestine. They can d bring sanctions in against anybody they like, and they will. And they have been doing it to Venezuela. Right, but you can't do it to Israel. No, no, Israel is, is, be, is be beyond the, the law. They can do what they like. And our politicians go along with it. And the press, of course, they go along with it because they're owned by the Jews. I mean, so is the government. But we, we, that's a waste of time trying to expect uh, somebody like the, the Murdoch organization to expose the, the, the control of the city of London over the British Parliament. You're not allowed to know that. You've got certain people, that are like Jeremy Corbyn. I mean, he's, he's a communist. They're all communists, in fact. The Fabian Society are all communists, straight after the war. So somebody, the, the, uh, Clement Attlee, he was a communist. They were all communists. They all, they all went to visit to Stalin in Russia and everything else. They were all communists. But we don't mention that. That's never mentioned. The fact that Jeremy Corbyn's best friend was a communist, Ralph Miliband, and the, the Miliband boys used to sit on uh, Jeremy's knee when they were little. He was their uncle, like an uncle to them. They're all communists. Wedgwood Ben was a communist. Same as his son now. It, 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 whatever his name is, the, the man with the girly name, Hillary. I mean, when, when, when Gray talks about... Uh, the only ones capable of presenting the truth. I mean, who, who, is he, who does he think he's kidding? I mean, what they, they cannot accept the fact that I am stood here now exposing them the rubbish they're speaking, and they want to, to present me as talking fake news. When anybody could tell you that, that what Sky and the BBC have been telling us about the, the wars in the Middle East is a pack of lies. What everything they told us about the Libya was a lie, and everything they're telling us about Assad is a lie, and everything they're telling us about uh, Venezuela now is all lies. And they can't stand it. There's nothing they can do about it. They have to keep pointing fingers. We, we, mustn't, we mustn't look into things and find out things that they are apparently incapable of discovering. But they're not incapable of discovering it. They discover it all, and, but they don't mention it. They keep it quiet. I mean, he's talking about uh, the impartial news uh, reporting is on its way, as if the East trying to complain they've always been impartial. I mean, they've been totally partial. It'll be no change. They tell lies. They are absolute liars. Everything you've heard, I can guarantee you, everything you've heard about Adolf Hitler is a lie. Everything. 
it's 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 it, it, it's much the same. In fact, about all the so-called evil men that have been murdered in the last few years. And Medora was the ne next one on the list. They've done them all. Allende went. They've all gone down. 